What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Tim's Sports Talk, and we are continuing the breakdowns of different players coming out of the NFL Draft here in 2023, and we're continuing it today with Cam Smith out of South Carolina. Apologies now if I say Cam Sims in this video, but it's Cam Smith. And let's take a look at Mr. Smith. He's projected to be a first-round pick. Some people saying, hey, we should go ahead and take him with our pick number 16. And I'll give you my thoughts. So he's a six foot, 188 188-pound cornerback out of South Carolina. You can see here his stats this season. He had 27 tackles, four assisted tackles with 23 of them solo. He had one interception and five pass deflections. He did have three interceptions in his junior season, 2021 where he had 41 tackles 11 pass deflections so clearly they targeted him a whole lot more than they did in 2022 and if we look here at the draft buzz profile you can see he had a 591 snaps on defense compared to 473 snaps in 2021 so we had almost or over a hundred more snaps and yet almost half the tackles and only one interception and less than half on the pass deflections. And here's why. Or why is because they didn't target him as much. But you can see here in 2021 is as a junior, he had played 11 games, 473 snaps. He chalked up 35 tackles, four assists and 13 stops like we just talked about. Nine pass breakups, three interceptions and this was awesome. Gave up in an outstanding QB rating when targeted 36 and a half as a junior and as a senior it went up to 71.3 percent and again we just went over the stats there I here's my thoughts all right here's what I have I wrote down straight but for this dude very quick you could tell that it's quick out of his breaks it's awesome especially because a lot of times this season they had him playing quite far off the ball he could get out of his breaks and go get the receiver and make a jump on it very versatile db they almost played him like a safety in the tennessee game they wanted to put him on their fast receiver named hyatt and he played super far off the ball and he almost played as if he was a third safety against that dude but he could play inside and outside corner Slot corner, of course. He can play everywhere. Very, very versatile corner. So big strength there. He had great eyes. and Especially because he, he was able to play off. He was able to keep his eyes on the quarterback. And then jump on if he needed to. He had really good eyes throughout. Great backpedal. Very hard to go deep on this dude. And it's also because he was playing so far off consistently. I watched the Arkansas game, the Tennessee game, and the Clemson game. Arkansas game he ended up getting hurt in, so I only basically watched half of that game. Then Tennessee and Clemson, he basically played off the ball the entire time, right? He's a willing tackler in the run game. It's not necessarily that tackling is his strength, but as a corner, you don't always get a guy that's willing to come up and tackle in the run game. He is a willing tackler and not a bad tackler at that and as far as Washington's concerned, this guy would be a great scheme fit. And Jack Del Rio's likes to play soft coverage off the ball, wants corners with understanding of concepts and route trees and route design and want to be able to go up and make some plays. This guy is a really, really good scheme fit for a Jack Del Rio. But here's his weaknesses. First off, I didn't see him much in press man. When he was up in the receiver's grill at the snap, he would back off and very rarely jam. Does that mean he's incapable of jamming? No, but he I didn't see it, right? He didn't get up and get in somebody's face and actually put hands on receivers pretty much at all throughout the film that I watched. Uh, when he plays soft coverage, he gives up a lot underneath, which is the Jack Del Rio special, but he does give up a lot underneath. But he is able to come up and make the tackle like I talked about. And also, it seems like on inside routes, he just gave up the inside. And maybe that was scheme and design by South Carolina. It seemed like he was playing man and he was willing to travel, but he was just giving up the inside whenever he was playing man to man in somebody. And it was just easy slant, easy crosser. And that's tough. 
So those are some negatives that I saw. The player comp that I saw other websites have, and I, when I looked into it, I don't hate the comparison, is A.J. Terrell, former first-round pick for the Falcons in 2020, playing really well over there in Atlanta. When I went back and watched a little bit of the highlights from A.J. Terrell's college career, I felt like A.J. Terrell was getting his hands on receivers more and able to play up and get up in people's grills and be a little bit more of a true number one corner on the outside. Where I don't really view Cam Sims as a guy that's going to come and be your number one corner. And if you're going a corner in the first round, that's what I would want. Right? So at pick number 16, would I take Cam Smith? I would not take Cam Smith. And that's not to say that he can't succeed at the NFL. I think he could be a very, very good player in the NFL. As I said, very quick and very smart football player, it looks like. He can get out there and be a very versatile little dude in certain schemes and certain situations. He's not a shutdown corner by any means. He's not a guy that you're just going to put on an island. He's a scheme guy. And that's okay. Can be very good. Not at pick 16 for me. And honestly, not even really a first rounder. Early second round, maybe mid second round pick would be plenty high enough for Cam Smith. You can get a really good player out of him. Just not a first round pick in my opinion. But you guys let me know what you guys think of Cam Smith in the comments below. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Also in the description below, there's a Discord link. Hop on our Discord and come talk some football with us. Last but not least, you can donate or become a channel member and get a first look at these videos. I basically, I'm only going to post one of these to the public once a day. But as soon as I make these videos, they're going to become available to the members. So 99 cents a month, you can get these videos right away and support the channel that way. Appreciate you watching till the end. And until next time. See ya!